Hello, everyone from Nottingham, England. My name is Tomis Ostojanov. I'm a Marie Curie Research uh, Postdoctoral Fellow at the University of Nottingham. And uh, I will be talking about orthographic reforms and changes and language policy development in the countries of the former Yugoslavia. This presentation is part of the ILA Congress, which takes place in uh, Groningen, the Netherlands, between 15th and 20th uh, August 2021. It is part of the symposium with a title on the right side, the language policy advocacy, uh, language policy theory, method and advocacy for contemporary geopolitics. I will give you a brief overview of the topic and present you my overarching research goal. In the next 20 minutes of time, I will focus on one particular aspect of my project, which is methodology. I won't be able to present you my uh, research, my project research outcomes yet, because I commenced it uh, just four months ago, though I had this in mind two years ago when I was writing my research proposal. Um, but Unfortunately, this COVID-19 uh, completely disrupted my dissemination plans. This conference was supposed to be uh, my delivery um, to, the, to, the aud to the research audience with my research outcomes. Before I start, I would like to say I'm, uh, I welcome the forthcoming discussion and especially looking forward to hearing from you after this Congress ends. I'm really interested in spelling changes, spelling reforms, um, spelling conflicts in other languages, not just European. So please uh, contact me. This research has been funded by the European Commission through the Horizon 2020 program, Marie Sklodowska Kiri Actions Individual Fellowship. Uh, as I said, it was commenced on March 1st, 2021. It will end in two years of time. Uh, host institution is um, University of Nottingham School of Cultures, uh, Languages and Area Studies. And I work under the mentorship of Professor Nicola McClelland. Uh, this is the core step page. You can find uh, abstract behind this link. And the dedicated uh, web page will be launched soon. Languages that have undergone recent spelling changes and reference in Europe were, for instance, Czech, uh, German, French, Croatian, Portuguese, and some other languages. Sometimes these initiatives for changes can cause controversies, boycotts, referendums, even violence. Some leading researchers have even used the word betrayal for Dutch, for instance, or war for Croatian and Czech uh, case. And these words were used to rhetorically depict the level of conflicts. When studying language ideology, I've come to an impression that social linguists are more focused on lexicon changes in standard languages. For instance, when I when I talk about my project in, especially in Croatia, um, I've been I've been asked, why haven't I focused on lexicon? Well, my answer is that too many people have been studying this issue. But more importantly, I think written norms can uh, offer us even better insights into language ideology. My focus is on uh, South Slavonic languages, Croatian, Bosnian, or Bosniak which is a complex issue to depict the uh, differences between these two glottonyms, Serbian and Montenegrin. Uh, I chose those languages uh, besides the fact that I'm a native speaker of Croatian and I'm a, uh, one, of the, one of the authors of the Croatian spelling uh, manual in 2013. Uh, there are three motives behind. First, the orthographic conflicts were entwined with the actual war in the 1990s. Second, 
the political disintegration was followed by the linguistic one. For instance, the official name in the former Yugoslavia, uh, constitutional is seen, uh, was Serbo-Croatian, and it was often considered in the in the literature as a pluricentric language. Now we're talking about four new standard languages. The third reason, third motive, uh, the codification of a of a written language was followed by a strong resistance, violence, discrimination, political conflicts. The example of violence was the destruction of Cyrillical public science in Croatia in 2013 in Vukovar. Uh, the example of discrimination is a law against the official and public usage of the Latin script in Serbia in 2018. Political conflicts can be seen in the fact that there were five attempts to pass legislation on Christian orthography in the uh, in the last decades. I would also like to add that the orthographic standardization of Montenegrin was developed in 2009 by an international group of exp experts since a national group had failed due to heavy conflicts. I will elaborate the creation case here. Sorry for this densely condensed slide. Here you can see the table with five different, one, two, three, four, five, different orthographic manuals of creation since 1986, which were printed in more than 15 editions. There were five attempts to pass legislation on Croatian orthography, all of which have officially been supported for public use. Here you can see them. Croatian entails some, as I'd like to call it, spelling symbols, which were constantly amended in this period. This is a table with the overview of the changes that is uh, that I described more thoroughly in uh, in the journal paper written in the bottom of the slide and literature is stated on the last slide. However, without much going into the details, this table can present you the phenomenon of hyperproduction of spelling manuals and dictionaries, spelling dictionaries for such a small language uh, as creation. In my PhD, I've counted that there have been 16 different published spelling manuals in 64 editions since uh, 1892, uh, when the first modern, so-called modern spelling manual was published. This high number of, of published spelling manuals and editions and the large number of glottonyms for creation in the 20th century, more than 10 glottonyms, this is the paper I described, mm. indicate a very rich social, cultural and social political history of creation. It, may, it might not surprise you that these language ideology issues um, can turn into real conflicts and even strongly affect a researcher's career. I'm not talking empty words now, but some institutions in the region expect from their employees to follow the so-called official standpoints on language issues. For instance, at the international conferences, you might get punished if you challenge some questions. To what extent this correlates to the freedom of research and dissemination or to the right of an, of an employer related to official standpoints, one can make a judgment on its own. So my goal is to understand better the uh, spelling change phenomenon. In other words, I'm interested in why written norms are changing at all, what the motives are, how these actions are governed, how the public reacts and why, what the origins of orthographic conflicts are and so on. This is the model representing my research. There are four strands or 
perspectives surrounding orthographic conflicts in the middle, which are speakers, um, language authority, um, media, and the social political context within which our, our reform or our change is framed. These arrows uh, represent three research objectives about which I will say something more in the following slides. The difference between this research and the research of other authors is that previous studies of spelling conflicts have lacked one of two of the four most important research dimensions that I presented. Uh, for instance, study on Czech reform uh, made by Bermel is missing aspect A. Um, Dutch B and C media and uh, study on orthographic authority bodies. German uh, made by Johnson, A and B. And Portuguese made by Garcés, uh, A and C as well. This leads to the inability to answer the following questions. For instance, uh, are orthographic conflicts observable in media articles merely political constructs or do they reflect the speaker's attitudes to a greater extent? How relevant are these controversies today? What are the economic aspects of orthographic re or standardization? How relevant is level of transparency democratization of orthographic codification in spelling controversies? The first objective um, is survey. It will be conducted in four South Slavonic countries where I mentioned uh, the so-called Serbo-Croatian language was constitutionally official until the 1990s, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, Montenegro, and Serbia. Data collection, data anonymization will be done by a well-known market research company. Uh, my research funds limit the number of survey participants on 500 in each country, so I will have 2,000 participants in total. They will be paid eventually in some vouchers, as I was explained, the amount differ from a country to a country. Uh, market Research Agency has large national online panels, so I was told I would be able to have a nice quota sample based on age, gender, and location because of the complex political organization in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, the survey will be conducted in both federal parts, in Serbian and Bosnian Croatian part. Also, the relatively large number of, of panel groups uh, allows the uh, survey to be conducted online, having in mind the average response rate between 10 to percent, 10 to 15 percent, which gives me an opportunity to ask more questions than in a phone survey. Uh, survey questions for Croatia are already drafted. Questions for other countries yet need to be determined during the field work. Two thirds of all questions will be the same for everyone, uh, which will be the ground for later statistical analysis, while one third will be country specific questions. A pilot survey will be assessed by 10 people, five international experts, so that will be common for all countries, and five country specific experts. International experts will be uh, my project supervisor a sociologist, uh, a social psychologist, a social linguist, and a devil's advocate. Five country-specific roles are um, uh, a social linguist, social linguist uh, in, a, in a country, a normativist, a modern historian, an interpreter, and a journalist. Uh, second, objective is the uh, discourse analysis on media articles. Babich and Ham, uh, co-authors in, in this paper, counted Croatian media articles with uh, general orthographic topic 
in 2000 and 2001 and collected 175 articles on this subject. My second work package uh, is to collect the relevant uh, media articles within a year of the orthographic manual first edition. The keyword based on which the filtering will be done by press clipping agency is pravopis, orthography. I expect to collect circa 1300 uh, articles uh, just to compare a six-year corpus of the German media articles uh, described in this paper contains uh, 733 texts. So it will be interesting to, to read them out. This course analysis will be roughly follow Bermel's methodology, uh, conceptual analysis framework. The last work package uh, belongs to what I, I like to call a comparative standardology analysis. I'd like to create an overview of spelling at the European level, trying to answer questions such as who decide an official spelling, how formal the, pro the procedure is, how transparent uh, it is, what happens, what happens if no agreement is achieved, uh, what has been changed and why, and so on. I hope to collect plenty of formal documents, regulations, meeting minutes, language acts, which would, which would help me to contextualize better the social political context of a certain standard language. This is the, the link where the SurveyMonkey questionnaire can be assess, accessed. You need to have a, a SurveyMonkey account to log into the survey and make comments for the, uh, on the questions. For the time being, um, it only contains the creation set of questions. It's bilingually written. Uh, feel free uh, to log into my survey, make comments. You're invited to, to make as much comments as, as you want, which uh, I, of course, won't forget to acknowledge. Some questions are so challenging to, to properly compose, so I am open for discussion. For instance, I know what I want to know, uh, how native speakers call their own language when not afraid of any consequences for the answers, but how to ask them and to avoid misinterpretation should be, how do you call your native language? Or what's the name of your native language? Or something else. I'm looking forward to hearing from, from you. Uh, at the end of my presentation, I would like to express my interest to network and cooperate with you. I find this topic of com comparative spelling standardization uh, under-researched and underrepresented in social linguistic literature. Um, the cooperation could be established on the data collection for European and non-European languages. I would be very interesting to compare the role of spelling in non-Latin script languages. Thank you for your attention. Bye.